she's back. That was the first giveaway. I walked out of the door. I thought I saw something move fast when I out of the corner of my eye. And yeah. So I gotta put something up there to obstruct her her work. How about a I don't want to put something up there that's going to give her building blocks. there to put a <laughs> uh, I don't want to be putting up something on top of the light that when I walk out the door there's going to be vibrations or shakiness that it's going to knock it down onto my head. I'm not supposed to be walking around here in my house shoes. And I don't want to put a cement block up there that's too heavy. Anything I can see would just encourage her. It would help her out. Yeah. Have one of these fall on my head. What about a bucket of water? Then if that fell on my head, it'd be hilarious. What the heck? I think I better get a step stool or it will fall on my head. Oh, there's not enough room up there for this. Yes, there is. It's going to be like the sword of Damocles hanging over my head when I come out. All right, I'll leave this out here in an altruistic effort to help Suki get up on the bed for our morning nap, afternoon nap, whatever nap we want. I looked around yesterday and thought, I got to give her something with a little bit of height to it so she can get on that and then jump up. Needed to make sure it was heavy enough and solid enough. Went in the basement, looked around. Oh, these walls of this house are six inches thick foam sandwiched between OSB board. And we originally had not had a window here. And the summer we were building the house, we cut out and removed that chunk of foam sandwiched between OSB. And that's perfect. So, I got it up here yesterday and called her in. She was a little hesitant about what to do with this you know what's going on with that but quickly she got on there and then then hopped up on the bed okay not a day i had this up 
so it's not in the way during the day. Came in here and she was ready to jump and go, but that wasn't laying flat yet. So, okay, I had her sit here, turn that down, laid it flat. She said, okay. <laughs> she, she came to here and jumped over that onto the bed. That's my independent girl. But she's happily on the bed. Well, <clears throat> audio level's not displaying. So somehow it got turned off. This camera is being a steep learning curve tool, equipment, kit, kit, water level. It's continuing to drop. Coming down here just now, I I see it's it's time to mow again. Why is she being antisocial? She's being my independent girl, and you know I like that actually. So it's not fair of me to call her antisocial. Well, hold on. I did not call her over here. Oop, there's a bump on your ear. It's a soft bump too, so. This time of the summer, her, ear, her ears, where they attach to her head, are scabbed up.
That little guy has met his end. Sad. It's almost like a child that has passed away in infancy. Cared for it, nurtured it, and despite everything we do, sometimes they die. So, out to the woods to find a new one. This is where last year I found the three maples and the three oaks and it, it was confusing to me because I haven't seen <clears throat> any maples out here. It's mostly oak, jack pine, but otherwise, where did the maple saplings come from? <laughs> Boy, this thing is still alive with new fresh leaves. And you got to look closely because these are bur oaks with the big, big leaves. And there'll be poison ivy, no doubt. I don't want to transplant poison ivy. I think I'm fairly well equipped to tell the difference between a maple and a poison ivy. Well, I may be forced to go get mosquito repellent on, because this may take longer than I remembered from last year. But I'm remembering now how I did have to look and look and look and look and look and look. The rain we had beginning when I woke up this morning was a big disappointment because it amounted to amounted to 0 0.05 of an inch which is half of a tenth of an inch if I'm saying that correctly oh this may not be so easy to find a maple youth I may have to go out to the maple that's beside the driveway. The big, there's one. Mm, I'm afraid that's too big. Big is better, but in this case, it may have roots that are going out too far that I will sever trying to dig it out. So I would rather try to find a little smaller one. Well, I have decided mosquito repellent is required. If nothing else than not have the distraction of constantly doing that. Oh, <clears throat> by the way, these beautiful little blue flowers that I had in abundance out here last year. These weird looking plants. Look at all the buds on it. And they're all the way through here. There's two of these in the front yard now this year. How did they get there? I don't know. When the plants went to seed back here, I guess they blew some seed into the front yard. When I say front yard, that's really the west side of the house. It's not really a yard, it's just a sand pit. All right, we're looking for 
maple saplings. I really want the big one I found. I'd hate to go through all the work of transplanting one only to have it die immediately. I'm so surprised that the little guy that I have to replace died off. I thought sure he was going to survive the frost and survive the hail. I think the others are doing just fine. But they are large enough. Aren't those cute? Another one there. All right, maple. You hear maple, maple, maple? Mosquitoes are still hovering, trying to get into my ear. This is, that's poison ivy. Don't pick one of those to wipe your butt if you poop in the woods. First order of wisdom there. I've never done that, but I've heard from people who have. Oof. And it isn't like absently brushing your hand against a poison ivy leaf. It's brushing it hard, pushing it hard against your buttock skin. <laughs> Rubbing off as much of their toxic oils onto your skin as possible. Well, there's one. Looks like there's two of them there, but no, there's one stem. Okay, that's my chosen choice. Now I don't want to forget where it is. I did that last year. I'd find one. Okay, so remember this branch hanging down. I got to go get the bucket and shovel and stuff, so... Yeah, I was beginning to say I did that last year. I'd find one like this. Okay, good. And then I'd go off and get the bucket and the shovel. And I'd come back to get the little bugger and it would have disappeared on me. Retracted into the ground when I wasn't looking. But I'm going to take the whole thing, increase my chances of success. Well, I don't know how to do any better than that. Okay, sweetheart. You are on your own. No, you're not. No, you're not. Here's a curiosity. A little bit earlier 
today when I looked at this, it was open and all of it was bright blue. Unlike now, the tops are almost white. I am hopeful that this is still the remains of the frost. I don't see any new leaves, but the leaves that are here, the ones that are not damaged, maybe these are new leaves. So these things are were the frost bitten. Doesn't that look healthy? Vibrant and vital. This is number one. This has been my favorite since the beginning. These long ones came from Chuck's when they took down his birch trees. They, they weren't measuring, they didn't have any idea this was going to go for firewood, and if it was, what were they going to do? They were just cutting them into sections. Most of them are about the same length, but a couple of these were, I need 10 inch. So a 20 inch section, you cut it in half, and then, but the ones these came out of were a little longer. Well, what do you do? You take off three inches on the end and waste it? Well, I could have done that. It wouldn't have gone to waste. I would have used it as knuckles. But I cut them in half, and they're turning out to be more like 12 inches long. I think I'll fit them. I'd be able to fit them in diagonally in the stove. The ones I threw on the ground here are too large around. I'm going to split them. I want larger pieces that will burn longer. Little guys like this, they don't burn very long. And you throw three or four of these in there, maybe the same or a bit around as a larger chunk, but they don't equal that because they got way more outside edges for airflow and they burn up a low, whole lot quicker than, than one single. So you got three turkey vultures circling above Otter Pond. Stacking wood is a, a work of art. Getting inconsistent pieces of wood to nest with one another. And often, one end of the chunk of wood is bigger than the other. You lay it up there and it will not lay horizontally. Turn it and then they're horizontal. It's really enjoyable for me. I, I love doing this. But I wish I had this wood shed already full by this time of year. And I don't have any more sources, firefly, any more sources of wood. What I have for wood right now might get me through the winter. Another problem with leaving larger chunks like this unsplit, I call these LDLs. I may have told you that before. Long distance logs. They'll burn longer. But the problem with keeping them large is they don't season as quickly. They don't dry out as quickly as smaller chunks. And this birch, I was very surprised this past winter. Some of it had been cut last summer and fall. Birch. And it was seasoned by midwinter. But they were not very large chunks. The tide is out. We just had a brief and uneventful visit from the muskrat. In fact, we didn't even merit a wink. I mowed down here this afternoon. 
pushed back the grasses you can't see <laughs> all of this has grown up since well just three weeks ago I mowed along the side of the woods that little pathway that actually proceeds further farther down the bog and then connects goes up the hill that I made last summer there's a log across there I can't get the mower any farther down so we'll have to rough it the rest of the summer if we want to take that trail I could bring a weed whacker down here that thing would probably get tangled very quickly although I think I used it last summer with the same result but back then that was end of July into August when the grasses were at their heaviest thickest and toughest I like to keep grass knocked down so it doesn't get out of control, which is why I mowed this this afternoon. And I like being down here without having grasses full of ticks crawling up my leg and pants and neck and hair. Frog. So what, you say? That's what I say. I still haven't seen a frog in the front yard. What used to be a grassy slope going down to Appaloosa Terrace. Last summer I counted seven on one walkthrough. It's because lack of rain, I'm sure, they aren't around. I don't know why that would make a difference, but frogs and water. I haven't seen one toad yet this year. I love toads, and they're such stoic, happy fellows. <laughs> I don't know what gives me the idea they're happy, but they just are, well, they don't run off. I've never seen a toad run off once in my life. And the problem with toads in a lawnmower is they can't run off. Almost looks like it's raining.